Well, good morning, Lighthouse. It's so great to be talking to you this morning. Haven't you just loved this week where we've been having the various guys just talking about fathers and fathering? And I've been asked this morning to talk to you about growing up with a father who was a provider, but who wasn't there for you emotionally or mentally in any other way. And um, you know, I, my mom and dad um, got divorced when I was uh, pretty early on in my life. And my dad, uh, I love him and he was, he was a good man, but uh, the thing with my relationship with my father was that he was, he was not around. We, we, we lived in Port Elizabeth and um, he lived in Johannesburg. And um, so we didn't get to see him that often. Uh, the one thing that my father did incredibly well was he, he provided well for my, for, for my family, for my mom and for my brothers. My mom never had to work. She was a stay-at-home mom, even though that they'd been separated and divorced. And my mom really provided well for, for my family, for myself and for my brothers and my mother, like I said. And, um, you know, that is, that, that's a, it's a blessing for me. I can imagine how much harder it would have been had my father not been a provider. But there was still this, this, this lack inside of me that, that you know, that, that, my, that I didn't have my father around to share, share my emotions with. And um, to be honest, it created some problems in, in my life, you know, growing up. And I've had to deal with that over the years. And um, the question is, you ask is, well, how do you deal with that? And like it's been said so many times this week, the amazing thing is that in the gospel, in, in, in the Bible, Jesus invites us to a relationship with God the Father. Jesus said, I'm the way, I'm the truth, I'm the life, and no one comes to the Father but through me. And so Jesus takes us to the Father. And uh, the Bible describes God the Father uh, as glorious. Yeah, and that's a wonderful thing. See, what makes God glorious as a father is that he is the absolute perfect father and that he meets every one of our needs that perhaps a physical father didn't. And while there is a huge need for fathers and for fathering in the church and for discipleship in the life of the church, um, to point us to the father, each of us can have our own relationship with God the Father as well. And, and now Jesus modeled this well. You know, in, um, in John chapter 16, and I want to read it to us, um, he's talking to the disciples. It's just at the Last Supper. He's about to betray, be betrayed. He's about to be uh, sentenced to crucifixion. And the disciples are all going to leave him. He's already prophesied that Peter, who said he, didn't, he would never deny him, that he would be with him for the rest of his life, that he would never abandon him, that he would always be there for him. And that he's prepared to lay his life down for him. Actually, Jesus said, no, Peter, tonight before the rooster crows, twice you will deny me three times. And so Jesus says this in, uh, um, in John chapter 16. And um, he says this in verse 32. But the time is coming and has come when you will be scattered, each of you to his own home. You will leave me all alone yet i am not alone for my father is with me this is an incredible uh, truth that jesus is, is communicating here can you imagine the picture jesus has walked with talked with taught imparted his life to the 12 disciples for the last three and a half years of his life it is going to be his darkest hour on earth and he's most probably his most neediest hour when he's going to need that emotional connection from his friends and um, he says to them, listen, guys, the time is coming when you are all going to be scattered and you're going to leave me all alone. But the wonderful hope that Jesus have is this. Yet I'm not alone for my father is with me. And I think that has been the thing that has saved me as I've grown up and as I've matured into the, the man that I am today is that God has given me this revelation that Though my earthly father provided for me, he wasn't there for me in the physical, emotional sense, but he provided for me. God, my father in heaven, is with me, and they all may leave me. I am never alone, because my father is always with me. Jesus goes on to say this in verse 33. I've told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. I mean, Jesus this is just incredible here again. Think about it. He is ministering to the disciples that are going to reject him, betray him, 
with living alone in his most darkest hour. And yet Jesus is able to minister to them and forgive them in advance for doing this because Jesus has this revelation that if everyone leaves him, he's never going to be alone because his father is always with him. And this is the key, my friends, to living a successful, victorious life in this world. We will have trouble in this world, but Jesus has overcome the world because he had a relationship with the Father and Jesus has came to the earth to give, bring us into a relationship with God the Father. And because of that relationship, come what may in this world, come what trouble may come in this world, we are never alone for our Father in heaven. He's always with us. Look at this promise that God the Father gives us from Hebrews chapter 13 and verses 5. And I'm the, the last person of, of, of verse 5, verse 5b. And it's from the Amplified Version and it says this, For he, God himself, has said, I will not in any way fail you, nor give you up, nor leave you without support. I will not, I will not, I will not in any degree leave you helpless or forsake you, nor let you down or relax my hold on you. Assuredly not. What a promise from the Father. And that's the encouragement that Jesus had. And that's the encouragement that you and I can have with us. Lighthouse, I trust that blesses you and encourages you and that you would have a great evening. God bless you, my dear friends.